Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'm Lauren and my video this week is part of my top sewing tips blog series and vlog series, which you'll find up here on my YouTube channel and on my blog as well, which I'll put a link to in the description of the video. And in this video, I want to focus on all about sleeves. So if you are learning how to make your own clothes at home or you're just looking for a bit of a refresher, and want to learn some new techniques, then hopefully this video is gonna be useful for you. you want to try and break it down, make it as simple as I can. So the first thing I want to talk about are different types of sleeve that you might commonly come across. And there are lots of different types, but I'm gonna break it into sort of three main categories that you might commonly come across if you're using sewing patterns to make your own clothes at home. So the first one is the raglan sleeve, and this is where you see a seam that comes from underneath the arm and the seam comes up into the neckline here. And then you have the seam on the back as well. So the sleeve effectively sort of extends right up over the shoulder and then comes into the neckline. So yeah, you get this sort of diagonal seam line here. This type of sleeve is one of the easiest ones to do because it's a bit like just sewing a regular seam anyway. And a really good example of this is the Green Line London sweatshirt. The next type of sleeve that you might come across is the grown on sleeve. And this is where there isn't actually a separate bit of fabric to make the sleeve. The sleeve is just like a sort of extension of the bodice. So it's just like one bit of fabric that is just part of the bodice and then it just extends over onto the sleeve. It's actually a bit like the jumpsuit that I'm wearing just now. Um, so you can see it's got a little cap sleeve, but that's just part of the bodice piece. Um, so obviously this one's really easy to do because there isn't even a separate bit of fabric to put on at all. It does mean that there's a sort of looser style and then you will get more kind of excess fabric kind of under the arm because the fabric has just one piece and um, that's just the sort of style that it is. And a really good example of this is the Tilly and the Buttons Stevie Top or Dress. It's got a nice little grown on sleeve so they tend to be quite short those ones. And then the last one that I want to talk to you about is a more kind of classic one, and it is called the set-in sleeve. So that is where you see a seam that sort of comes round the shoulder like that. And you can get lots of different types of set-in sleeves. So you can get ones that are gathered and sort of fuller, or you can get just ones that are nice and sort of smooth and flat, or it might be like a butterfly sleeve where the sleeve itself is really full and it sort of sw uh, swishes around or it might be a tulip sleeve where you get sort of folds of fabric coming over each other, or it might have little pleats or tucks in it. So they're all sort of variations of a set-in sleeve and that, and that is just when you've got to set in this separate bit of fabric into the sleeve head. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more in detail about that and give you some tips for how to do it in a really nice and um, neat way so that you get a good finish on your garments. So the next thing I want to cover is what a sleeve actually looks like on a pattern because when you just get flat bits of templates or patterns that you're using to cut out your fabric especially when you first start it can be quite hard to imagine how this is all sort of coming together so the example that I've got to show you is for a set-in sleeve so that's like the sort of classic traditional seam sleeve and as you can see um, in this example that I've got here it's sort of rounded and curved at the top but if you look closely what you will typically see is that each curve is actually different and that is because the front and back of your shoulders are shaped differently and they're rounded differently. So the pattern's got to sort of accommodate that shape that is around your shoulder. And the way that it's sort of marked, if it isn't actually written on the pattern back of the sleeve, front of the sleeve, is that there will be little notches that indicate it. So typically the double notch and the curve that you can see here indicates the back sleeve and the single notch is the front. And then usually you have like a little notch in the middle as well. And that tells you where to, when you come to set the sleeve into your bodice, you would be matching that little notch or the sometimes it looks like a little circle and um, you'd be matching that up with your shoulder seam. So the next thing I wanted to talk to you about is actually setting the sleeve in. And there's various different ways to do that. I'm gonna explain two of them to you. So you can either set it in flat, and this method is really commonly used for fabrics that are stretchy. So if you're making a sweatshirt, like the Soul House 7 toaster, or like a stretchy t-shirt top, like the Tilly and the Buttons Agnes, then the instructions will quite commonly tell you to set the sleeve in flat. 
so that is when you have only sewn the shoulder seam so the bodice, the front and back bodice can still effectively lie flat on the table and then you still keep your bit of fabric for your sleeve flat as well so you've not sewn the seam in the sleeve yet and then you have to fit the curve of the sleeve head into the, the armhole so you have to use your notches in that instance to match up the front notches and the back notches and where the shoulder seam is as well and then you just need to sort of work within those sort of smaller sections that effectively get broken up when you match your notches first and just make sure that your raw edges line up together and then sew it in so it is a little bit fiddly because you're sort of making one curve fit into a different shaped curve but just have to use plenty of pins and I like to put them in at a right angle to the raw edge of the fabric it's just a bit more of an accurate way to do it so then once you've actually sewn the, the sleeve in then when you come to sew the side seam of the bodice and the sleeve you sort of do it in one you just kind of go from the, bo the bottom hem of the top all the way up and round to the bottom of the sleeves so that's just like finishes it off and that's one one sleeve so it's a nice easy way to do that when you've got stretchy fabric because it's quite malleable and it's easy to sort of ease the sleeve head in that way the other way is to set the sleeve in in the round so that is when you have on the bodice you've sewn your shoulder seam and your side seams so you've effectively got like a, a hole an arm hole there and then you sew the underarm seam of the sleeve as well so your sleeve then becomes like a tube and then you've got to fit the two together so before I talk in detail about how to actually do that, I want to just talk a little bit about ease because you'll hear the word ease used quite a lot in reference to sleeves when you come to do dressmaking. And ease basically refers to the difference between the measurement of the armhole on the bodice and that curve that is on the, the sleeve head and the pattern piece for the sleeve. And quite often that measurement, so of that curve of the sleeve head will be more than the measurement of round here and that is because your shoulder is round and when you put in a sleeve you're creating something that is 3d so having that additional ease there just helps to create that shape and create that form now depending on the style of the sleeve there might be more or less ease built in and different patterns can sort of vary it basically depends on how they've been drafted and um, if it's a gathered sleeve for example then there's going to be lots of ease because the fabric's supposed to be kind of bunched up and sort of gathered whereas if it's supposed to look like a nice flat smooth seam then there's obviously going to be less ease in it as well but as I said before, in order to get that shape at the shoulder to accommodate the shape of your body, there usually is a bit of ease that has to be accommodated for when you when you actually put the sleeve into the bodice. So what instructions will quite commonly ask you to do is sew a row of or several rows of easing stitches in the sleeve head and you do that by having a long stitch length on your machine. Some patterns will ask you to do two, some will say three. So if the seam allowance is one and a half centimetres or five eighths of an inch quite often instructions will tell you to put three rows of easing stitches in so you usually put two rows within the seam allowance and then you put one row one row a little bit further away than the seam allowance so that when you actually come to sew the seam on the seam allowance you're not actually sewing where these easing stitches are so you have to make sure that you've got long thread tails in the bobbin and the top threads because you're going to pull on these long stitches in order to ease it in. And then you just sew your line of stitches as instructed in your instructions. So as I say, either one or two. If the seam allowance is a bit narrower, like if it's a centimetre or half an inch, it might just be that you do one line within the seam allowance. Um, so you might come across both um, three lines or two lines. And then once you've got them sewn in, then you just very, very gently pull on. It's usually if you pull on the bobbin thread, you get just a little bit more slippage in the thread, which is what you want. And effectively, you're looking to sort of gather or kind of start to very gently bunch the fabric up, but not a lot. Obviously, if it's gathered, it will gather up a lot. But if it's supposed to be a flu smooth, flat sleeve, then you're not really looking to gather it. You're just looking to kind of draw the fabric sort of in on itself a little bit and then you have to put the sleeve into the bodice right sides together and then the key is to match up your notches first so you match up the double notch at the back the single notch at the front the notch that indicates where the center of the sleeve head is that's going to match up with your shoulder seam and then you'll also have the seam of the underarm of the sleeve which then is going to match up with the 
side seam of the bodice so you get all of them pinned first again I like putting my pins in at a right angle to the fabric and once you've got those four points in you've then got smaller areas to work with so drawing gently on those easing stitches that you've done to just draw that fabric in making sure that the raw edges of the fabric line up and then putting plenty pins in if your fabric's quite stable and it's holding its shape then you, you might be fine to then just go and sew that straight away. If your fabric's very floppy and floaty and sort of moving around a lot, you might feel more comfortable hand tacking or basting the, the sleeve in before you actually sew on the machine. Um, I tend not to, but I have put in lots of sleeves before, so it might just be like a practice thing. So whatever you feel more comfortable with. Um, and then when you do actually come to sew it on the sewing machine, just remember that you are sewing something that is 3D so it will not lie flat on your sewing machine you have to kind of hold it and sort of support it as you're sewing it and keep stopping never feel committed when you put your foot on the sewing pedal you've got to keep sewing until you get to the end it's okay to sew a little bit and stop and just reposition your fabric before you sew the rest of it and I like to have the sleeve facing me as I so so it's like the top layer of fabric just so that I can make sure everything's nice and smooth as I'm sewing it and that I can make sure no little sort of tucks or little folds in the fabric appear sometimes they do it totally happens you don't necessarily have to unpick the whole sleeve it might be that you have to just take out a little section and just sew that again so as you sort of work your way around the sleeve just smooth out the make sure that the underneath fabric sitting nice and smooth and flat the fabric of the bodice and then you you know you're just keeping an eye on your sleeve to make sure that it's nice and nice and sort of smooth and flat as well so I hope you found that useful in terms of getting a bit more context about sleeves and the different types that you can have and some tips on actually inserting them. It is a little bit of a fiddly process but as long as you've got your notches marked clearly and you pin it and just take your time, you know, I'm sure you'll get there. If you've got any questions at all, just please feel free to ask me in the comment section below and I shall try to help. Remember, I've got a blog post on this as well. If you prefer to sort of read notes on it and look at pictures, that's on my website and I'll put a link to that in the description. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, just remember to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on my next video. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you next time. Bye.